So last but not least, um, we are going, we're moving to the third block of content, the one regarding the uh, guidelines on fast track recognition of Ukrainian academic qualifications by Laura Dirbotskite and uh, Luca Ferranti, sorry for my pronunciation, mm -hmm. from CINEA, the Information Center on Academic Mobility and Equivalence um, in Italy. Let me introduce the speakers. Laura has been senior credential evaluator at CIMEA Narek, Italy, for more than five years. She is of Lithuanian origin, fluent in four languages, and is an expert in the evaluation of credentials from the former, so, for, former Soviet Union countries, especially the Ukrainian uh, ones, and uh, Northern Europe and Baltic countries, and in addition, some Asian countries such as Pakistan and Bangladesh. She is Deputy Coordinator of TMEA's Credential Information Service, also carrying out activities of training and supervision of junior credential evaluators. Thanks to the consolidated experience in the evaluation of post-Soviet qualifications, she is currently TMEA's contact in the projects related to the Ukrainian wow. crisis. And since 2022, she has been a member of the APICE Technical Commission and participates in the development of the association's training activity. Luca Ferranti, um, she, he is an MA in Foreign Languages for the International Relations with Specialization in Russian, German, and English. Has been a senior credential evaluator at Time Anarik Italy since April 2021, focusing on the evaluation of credentials from Ukraine, Russia, Azerbaijan, and the countries from Central Asia. Since the outbreak of the Ukraine crisis, he has been actively participating in initiatives to disseminate information about the Ukrainian education system at the national and international level. So thank you very much and go on. Okay, good day, good day everyone. I will um, uh, share my screen. Do you see it? Yes. Okay, so... Um, Today, as uh, we were presented, uh, I am Laura Drevonsky, and together with my colleague, we will present the guidelines on fast track recognition of Ukrainian academic qualifications. We divided our uh, our presentation in three sections. So the first one that in a few seconds will be presented by me is about useful tools and resources uh, that can come to overhand when evaluating Ukrainian qualifications. The second part is about Ukrainian education system, and then we will finalize our presentation showing the ways to verify the authenticity of Ukrainian qualifications. My slides are not going. Okay, so uh, let's start with the useful tools and resources. Uh, as it was mentioned, I have been working for Chimea for more than five years, and let's say that from the first day that I started working here, I was presented to Ukrainian qualifications. Shortly about our center, Chimea is Information Center on Academic Mobility and Equivalence and was established in 1984. Its main activity is informing and advising in Italian higher education institutions and international students on the procedures of recognition of qualifications and on themes linked to Italian and international higher education. We also do training for Italian universities. So at the beginning of March, right after the conflict broke out, um, we created on our website a section dedicated to recognition of Ukrainian qualifications and all the information related to this subject. Uh, the section is called um, Focus Ukraine and is available both in Italian and English languages. Here you, uh, here you can see the information that was uh, uh, that is provided um, some of the information that is provided in this section and uh, uh, in uh, on math uh, on the uh, 10th of march in order to help italian universities which are responsible authorities in recognition procedures of foreign qualifications for for the academic purposes and uh, uh, understanding that the, after the contact, the um, flee of the students, the students that are fleeing from the Ukraine uh, will increase. We organize an online webinar 
on Ukraine education system and ed academic qualifications. And all the materials are available on, uh, on this section. Uh, somebody's talking? Okay. Okay. So, Laura, Laura, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I think we are not seeing your slides correctly. I see in the chat as well. Uh, maybe you, you can you can unshare uh, and share your screen again. Oh, I'm sorry. Because I don't see the chat. Okay. Okay. Do you see it now? Do you see? We can see module one slide, useful tools and resources. Oh, but it shows, okay. It shows to me that you are seeing slide number five. No, this is the number three. What, what are you seeing now? What is? Click on view mode. This is the suggestion. But it is on view mode. Florian. It is on view mode. If you see that this is the view mode and I click on it. Eh? Mm -hmm. I comment all you. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry really for technical. No worries. Um, maybe we can try that, Susanna. Um, oh, wait a share. minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. I think I resolved it. Yeah. Just a second. Okay. Now you should see. Now you no. should see it right. Okay. Yes. Is it? Okay. So, okay. So I was talking about the webinar online that we organized for Italian higher education system to present the Ukrainian qualification, the Ukrainian education system and the qualifications, and also um, to offer comparability within the Italian system. So, so to help them to evaluate uh, the credentials from Ukraine. After that, in at the beginning of April, the Directorate General for Education, Youth, Sport and Culture of the European Commission, in cooperation with our center, organized a webinar online training for fast track recognition of Ukrainian academic qualifications. So also um, the um, recording of this webinar is available on the, the section Focus Ukraine. And as an outcome of this webinar, the European Commission issued a publication guidelines on fast track recognition of Ukrainian academic qualifications. So here you can see that this is really very useful document that includes not only information on the Ukrainian education system analysis of academic qualifications and relative documentation verification sources, but also the legal framework of um, legal framework of ed education system of Ukraine, which um, went through a lot of changes and still is changing. So the latest changing that are up to July 2022 are in this document. And I really suggest to, uh, to, to use it for those who are dealing with, credential, um, with credentials from Ukraine. Another uh, very useful resource that we made available to public is a ScanD database, a part dedicated to Ukrainian qualification. What is ScanD database? Uh, this database was de developed in the framework of two NARIC projects, co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the U European Union in order to foster a fair recognition of, of academic qualifications. So, and uh, 24 countries participated in those uh, two projects. And uh, in this database is more than 4,000 authentic samples of uh, higher education qualifications. Uh, but unfortunately, the, the weak side of this uh, database is that information included in this database is available only to enigmatic centers. So with the permission of Ukrainian authorities, responsible authorities, we made the part dedicated to Ukraine, Ukraine qualifications available to public. So as can, you can see from this slide, there are more than 300 samples 
from Moloch specialist to Dr. Nauk that are authentic uh, and um, um, uploaded by the uh, higher education institution. Uh, more than 60 institutions did this. Did this, And also this, uh, here is the link and you can find uh, these samples. Another uh, resource that at least in our office is used every single day is an enigmatic website where you can um, find in standardized information of uh, 55 countries. And on each of the country pages, there, there is an official information on higher education systems, of course, including the Ukraine. And as you can see, or all the information is divided in uh, 13 uh, steps, 13 um, points. Uh, so there is information about national information since the system of each country, university education, national qualification frameworks, verification resources, and so on. So this is really a very useful resource. Uh, also worth mentioning that Ukraine is a signatory country of the Lisbon Recognition Convention. Therefore, all the provisions of the convention should be applied in the procedures of recognition of their qualifications. And uh, I wanted also to um, take a, a fast glance on the website of ENIC Ukraine, which is really um, user-friendly is uh, available in both Ukrainian and English languages and information in both of these languages are totally the same. And uh, as you can see, there is information uh, uh, on education system of Ukraine, list of accredited higher education institution, a lot of samples of educational documents um, that were relevant to a certain period of time. Uh, a, a national qualification framework, which is quite new, uh, quite new tool uh, established by the Ukrainians, and also the service of uh, verification of apostille. Those who work with the um, uh, Ukrainian credential, credentials knows uh, know that a lot of documents are apostilled. So this is the way to verify if the apostille is uh, right on uh, the authentic or not. And here is the um, uh, last uh, resource, but not uh, the least that I would like to share with you. It's a Q entry database, which was developed within two different projects, co-funded also by the European Union. And uh, in, in this, um, also database information is first handed, provided by the uh, responsible authorities of each country. So the database consists of uh, sec higher secondary school qualifications, giving access to higher, in, uh, higher education. As for now, you can see that there are uh, tw uh, 95 qualifications from 51 countries, including also uh, qualifications of European baccalaureate and international baccalaureate. And as you can see from the screenshot on the left, there's uh, all the information about uh, secondary school qualifications in, uh, in Ukraine that give access uh, in their country. So that's it about the uh, tools and resources. Now I give word to my colleague, uh, Luca Ferranti. Thank you very much, Laura. I hope you are seeing the presentation now. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it in full mode. Is it okay now? Yes. Oh, great, thank you. Um, okay, so we are um, now going to talk about, in the second module, to talk about um, the Ukrainian uh, education system, both at a school level and at a higher education level. Um, as far as the Ukrainian school system is concerned, um, as many of you will already know, it is divided into three main stages. Um, primary school covering grades from one to four, lower secondary school covering grades from uh, five to nine, and upper secondary school covering grades from 10 to 11. Um, so pupils end their lower secondary school after a total of nine years of study. Um, but to receive the lower secondary school qualification, they no, do not simply need to complete these nine years at school. They also need to 
pass a final state exam. Uh, the concept of final state exam in the Ukrainian school system uh, takes the name of state final attestation, the Ravna Pilsunkova attestacia. Uh, this can be found both at a lower secondary school level and at upper secondary school levels. Um, the, secondary, the, the lower secondary school qualification is named Certificate of Basic General Secondary Education, Svidostropo Pro Bazovu Zahalno Seretnio Svitu. After completing grade nine and receiving the uh, respective qualification, pupils can choose whether to proceed um, to vocational courses or to continue um, to grades 10 and 11 to be awarded the qualification of upper secondary school. Uh, let us focus for the moment, let us focus on the uh, upper secondary school uh, general path, uh, which requires, as, as I was mentioning, two more years of study. Um, at the end of the second year of upper secondary school, which is the 11th year of schooling in total, uh, students usually need to take their state um, exam, uh, which takes the name, the concrete name of the exam is external independent evaluation. So uh, state final attestation is the general concept, external independent evaluation is the concrete name of the test that pupils have taken starting from 2015. Um, some exceptions uh, were made in the years from 2020, and I will cover them uh, in a few seconds. It is important to note that uh, since 2019, the upper secondary school qualification has changed its name from complete upper secondary education certificate, Atestat Propovno Zahalno Seretnio Osvitu. This was the previous name uh, up to 2019. The new name since 2019 is Certificate of Completion of Upper Secondary Education. Svidostropos Dobutia Povno Zahalno i Seretnio Osvite. Um, in any case, both qualifications are the uh, school living qualification of the general path awarded after 11 years of education. These are the samples um, of the credentials of lower secondary um, education on the left and upper secondary education on the right. On the top, you can see the um, the credentials issued with the older name, so the uh, previous qualification issued up to 2019. On the bottom, you can see the qualifications issued with the new name of the qualifications uh, starting from 2019 onwards. It should also be noted that all Ukrainian secondary school um, documents are issued in a state standard format. This means that all documents are pre-printed and pre-filled in by the state at a centralized level and they simply need to be filled in um, by the awarding institutions, the schools or the colleges. Uh, as far as the personal details of the students are concerned, uh, the awarding year and the grades uh, awarded to the student. But the format and the information reported in the documents uh, are standardized. As I was mentioning, upper secondary school qualifications usually uh, in order to be awarded, usually require the passing of a state exam after the completion of the ninth or the eleventh year of school. Um, some exceptions were made starting from 2020, uh, before of COVID, because of COVID in 2020 and 2021, and mainly because of the ongoing conflict this year in 2022. What happened concretely? Um, what happened in these three years was that the final school certificate was issued to all students upon completion of their school studies without the need of taking a state exam. The state exam was nevertheless available for all students wishing to, uh, to be admitted to higher education. This is because higher edu admission to higher education in Ukraine um, happens on a competitive basis and a state exam is required for access to virtually uh, all um, courses. It is also mm, worth mentioning that in 2020 and 2021, uh, the concrete uh, form of the state exam continued to be the external independent examination as from 2015, whereas this year in 2022, the exam took a slightly different um, form 
and was named National Multi-Subject Test, NMT, in brief. You can find more information about um, exceptional measures taken by um, many countries in the, Euro in the ENIC-NARIC network on the ENIC-NARIC website uh, by clicking on the link on, in this slide. As I was mentioning before, upon completion of grade nine, students can either take the general path uh, leading, leading to the upper secondary school qualification or choose a vocational path. This vocational path after lower secondary school was part of secondary education until 1991, as in the broader Soviet Union. Whereas after several reforms, starting from 1991-92, um, these uh, vocational qualifications were included in the Ukrainian short cycle higher education system, and two new qualifications were introduced. The qualified worker diploma, Diplom Kvalifikovanoho Robitnika, and the junior specialist diploma, Diplom Olcho Specialista. Access to, these, uh, to the courses leading to these qualifications um, can be allowed either on grade nine, based on grade nine, or based on grade 11, and the duration will vary uh, subsequently. But to better understand these qualifications and how they fit in the broader higher education system of Ukraine, let us now take a closer look of the Ukrainian higher education system more in general. Um, as Laura was mentioning before, Ukraine is a signatory of the Lisbon Recognition Convention, and uh, in, in 2005 it entered the Bologna process, which means that Ukraine has been um, adapting to the three cycle system uh, of Bologna. And so we have, as you can see on the left on the screen, a junior specialist qualification being the short cycle qualification. We have the bachelor, bacalaver, as first cycle qualification. We have two second cycle qualifications, master and specialist diplomas, and two third cycle qualifications, candidate of science and doctor of science. The uh, accreditation of uh, Ukrainian higher education institutions can be checked either in English and Ukrainian on the website of ENIC Ukraine or um, exclusively in Ukrainian on the registry uh, of, the minister, uh, of the Ministry of the um, University uh, and Science of Ukraine, um, which is the Yedbo registry, uh, which you can see on the right of the screen. So going back to our uh, junior spe specialist diploma, the vocational qualification, um, as we were saying, it is a, a short cycle qualification of the Bologna process, level five of the European qualif qualification framework. Actually, uh, um, access to these courses can be based on grade nine, so on lower secondary education. In this case, the duration of study will be uh, longer, uh, ranging from two to four years, or it can be based, admission can be based on upper secondary school qualification. Um, so grade 11, in this case, the duration of study will be slightly so shorter from one to three years. The academic rights provided by this um, junior specialist diploma, by the junior specialist diploma, are access to bachelor courses. Of course, if um, the fields uh, if it is into a related field, then it will also allow advanced standing in the bachelor program. As Laura was mentioning before, Ukraine is undergoing an important process uh, of reform in its school and higher education system. And these um, junior specialist diploma is uh, being um, affected by these reforms as it is being gradually phased out. The last admission to, this course, to, to these courses were uh, in 2019, and it will be gradually replaced by two new qualifications named Junior Bachelor and Junior Professional Bachelor, um, Diplom Molochoho Bacalavra and Diplom Fachovoho Molochoho Bacalavra in Ukrainian. It is also important um, having a quick look at the documental um, aspect of uh, the higher education qualifications in Ukraine. As you can see in the right of your screens, um, from 1991 to 1997, um, the diplomas were usually awarded uh, in a paper format, the one you can see on the top, 
uh, whereas starting from 1997, they were awarded in a plastic format, the, the, which is the sample you can see in the middle of, uh, the, um, of the screen. In both cases, um, these are two examples, again, of state standard formats. These were documents which were pre-printed and pre-filled in by the state. And then the awarding institution, the university, the college, um, only needed to fill them in with the personal details of the student, uh, the grade awarded, the date of issue, and these um, details. Starting from 2015, the awarding institutions were allowed a, a degree, um, a greater degree of autonomy um, in the um, in the release, in the issuing of the of, of their uh, diplomas and qualifications which meant that they can choose uh, to vary the visual aspect of the qualification, but they still need to um, respect some important elements of the qualification that should be there. Um, for example, as you can see in the bottom right of the slide, the trident symbolizing Ukraine needs to be there, the wording Ukraina, Ukraine needs to be there, and the information about the qualification needs to be presented in a standardized way. So again, the, um, great, um, the greatest amount of uh, flexibility is allowed only as far as the visual aspect of the document is concerned, not as far as the content uh, is concerned. And as you will see, um, this pattern will be there for all qualifications ranging from the short cycle qualification to the second cycle qualifications. Here um, you can see examples of bachelor's diploma, Diplom Bacalavra, which is a first cycle qualification of the Bologna process, level six of the European qualifications framework. Entry requirements for this qualification uh, typically being complete upper secondary education. Um, in this case, the duration is of four years. Of course, I was, as I was saying before, is, uh, if admission is based on a junior specialist diploma, which is a short cycle qualification in Ukraine, then students can be uh, admitted with an advanced standing and the duration can be um, less than four years. The, acad the academic rights provided uh, by a bachelor's diploma are, of course, access to second cycle courses. Second cycle qualifications um, are the master's diploma, you can see here, and the specialist diploma, which I will be mentioning in a few seconds. The master's diploma, again, is a level seven of the European Qualifications Framework degree, um, and its typical entry requirement is a bachelor diploma, but um, admission can also be based on a specialist diploma. Duration, in any case, will be of one to two years, and this program is um, typically research oriented and is concluded with a final thesis. Academic rights of, uh, granted by a master's diploma are access to doctoral studies leading to the qualification of a candidate of science. A different qualification always at level seven of the European qualification framework, so a second cycle qualification is the specialist diploma, Diplom Specialista. As I was saying before, this qualification can be accessed based on a, a bachelor's diploma, Bacalavr. In this case, the duration will be of one to one and a half years, but admission to um, specialist diploma can also be based on complete upper secondary qualifications. And this means that uh, the specialist diploma in this case will be a long cycle qualification lasting five to six years. It is important to mention that the specialist diploma mainly provides a professional qualification and defines the particular field to which this uh, professional qualification applies, but it, it can also grant access to the courses leading to the qualifications of master and uh, candidate of science. So it provides access both to another second cycle qualification or to a third cycle qualification. Lastly, um, Exactly as the junior specialist diploma, also the specialist diploma is being affected by the um, educational reforms in Ukraine. It is also being gradually phased out. Uh, last admission to this program was in 2016, which means that we could expect to receive um, these kind of degree for some years 
um, from now because um, you still have to uh, take into account that duration can be of five to six years uh, in full-time study. So if study is carried out in part-time mode, duration can be longer. Um, after, these be, uh, after this qualification will be phased out, uh, the only second cycle qualification remaining in the UK, Ukrainian higher education system, will be the master's diploma. Third cycle qualifications, as mentioned before, are the candidate of science, which can be um, accessed through a specialist diploma or a master's diploma. This um, study path usually lasts at least three years and leads to the qualification of candidate of science. This name is being changed to doctor of philosophy, doctor philosophy, um, always due to the educational reforms. Building on a candidate of science or on a doctor of philosophy, students can have access to a further third cycle qualification, which is called Doctor of Science in the current um, denomination. The new name will be Doctor of Arts, Doctor Mestetstva. This is actually a research position which is included into the higher education system um, of Ukraine. As you can see, uh, as you have seen in the slides, I have included some samples uh, of uh, Ukrainian documents. But I uh, kindly, I, I strongly suggest that you also check the website of ANIC Ukraine for a complete set of all the educational documents that you could expect to receive from 1991 up to today. Uh, the resources provided by ANIC Ukraine are, are um, really uh, easy to understand and complete. I would now like to head towards the end uh, of this session by uh, addressing a final topic, which is the verification of the authenticity of Ukrainian credentials. The Ministry um, of Education and Science of Ukraine provides um, a unified state electronic database on education, in brief, YEDBO, um, which has a lot of uh, resources in itself. A lot of services are available. And I would first like to concentrate on the um, green button you see on the left, which is the register of educational documents. Through this register, as a matter of fact, it is possible to verify the authenticity, to check the authenticity of all qualifications issued in plastic format from 1997 to, nine, uh, to 2015, and of all qualifications issued from 2015, with some little exceptions. To carry out the verification uh, process, you need to select uh, the education the education level in the first drop down menu um, the database is available only in ukrainian so we have provided some translations here uh, in the second drop down menu you can you need to choose the name of the qualification and then you will need to fill in uh, the five remaining fields uh, with the series the number of the document and with the personal details of the students all these fields will be will need to be filled in in Ukrainian, not in Latin letters. And um, so we, to, to ease your uh, work, we have provided a little guide here, um, highlighting with um, the colors the fields that be uh, that should be filled in, both on the request form and on the certificate. The only field that can be and should be filled in in Latin letters is the CAPTCHA code needed to proceed with the verification. If the verification is successful, so if the qualification is authentic, you will have um, the verification result, as you can see here on the right on the screen, with the possible matches uh, on the certificate, on the educational document on the left. Another possibility, uh, another resource provided by the um, database on educational document is the possibility of verifying the results of state exams. So if the register of educational documents I have described so far allows you to verify all the documents issued in plastic format from 1997 on, as I was saying before, this second um, tool I am now describing allows you to verify the state exams taken uh, by students after the completion of their secondary school uh, studies. Um, just to remind you, this state final exam 
was named external independent examination up to 2021 and is uh, named national multi-subject test in 2022. To verify uh, these results, you simply need to know the year in which the exam was taken. You need the result card number, which is a number that each student um, will be able to provide you with if they actually passed their um, state exam. And then you, of course, need the personal details of the student, again, to be filled in in Ukrainian language. The CAPTCHA code, again, will be um, filled in in Latin letters. And if the verification is successful, you will receive this verification result, um, which is actually quite accurate and detailed, as it provides you with a subject per subject verification. Uh, in this case, it is um, so that the, the pupil took um, their exams in Ukrainian language and literature, history of Ukraine and mathematics. I thank you very much for your attention. Um, that's the end of my part of the presentation, and we'll, I'll leave the floor to Laura for some final remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luca. I just wanted to say that uh, I didn't say it uh, at the beginning, but we're really very glad and honored to be part of this um, of this course. And I hope really that the information that we provided and the, the samples that we shared will be helpful for every officer that has to evaluate uh, credentials, foreign credentials. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laura and, and Luca. I think that this part of the video will go directly to some of our <laughs> academic services because it's uh, very complete and for sure it will make easier the, uh, the task of uh, recognition of these prior studies, of these studies of Ukrainian students. Um, Kasia uh, has, uh, has a question. Uh, Okay, the Ukrainian refugees are different from other groups in that they are European, are included in the refugee directive, and their documents seem easier to recognize. Is this right, or what are typical hurdles for Ukrainian refugees? Um, I mean, um, it was mentioned, for example, we worked um, during the summer on the report that will um, that will be issued uh, in October this month that uh, it was um, uh, a report organized by Council of Europe uh, on um, uh, also report on Ukrainian qualification system and the situation that we uh, that Ukraine is in uh, now so I mean, and there was a part of uh, also a QPR, and we were discussing about that that uh, Ukrainian situation is. Um, facilitated because of the digitalization that this system has and I mean it's so so many qualifications are verifiable and uh, also the um, database that showed Luca I mean it's enough to know the name and the patronymic name of the person and the number of qualification that it can be and can be verified and still uh, for example in our office if we cannot if we cannot find the qualification in the database uh, universities still respond to our inquiries so i mean this side of the situation that is very different from afghanistan um, is is very facilitating for us credential evaluators i, I don't know if i answered the question but i understood the, it was about the um, this side of the of the qualifications. Well, let's see if Kasia can can answer. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Um, more questions from the participants? No, Luca, I have a question for you. Um, you showed uh, a slide with the um, unified state electronic document. Um, this is only for the completed studies or we can access to ongoing studies? Well, uh, what I was showing now is only about uh, completed studies, so final documents. There is actually one more part uh, of the um, registry, um, a description of which I included in the slides that are on the Moodle. I didn't include them in the presentation today uh, for time purposes. Um, it actually um, allows the user, not the credential evaluator, but the students themselves, 
to, to provide the credential evaluators with an extract of their um, documents present in the YEDBO registry. What does this mean? It means that if the student has his digital signature, this is a prerequisite for the student to be able to access this tool, um, the student will be able to provide the credential evaluator with a PDF document containing a list of all the qualifications the student received. So we, I'm still talking about final qualifications, but also about enrollments into universities. So um, in this case, you will also receive information about the fact that that very student has been enrolled uh, for a bachelor program, for example, now in September. But this will not provide still information about the exams. This is not available yet. So either final qualifications or information about enrollment. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Because I'm aware that a lot of students are finalizing right now or in the, uh, in the past weeks, their, their exams. So sometimes universities want the, uh, the, the final, the last information. If they cannot be provided with this information, maybe it can be a, a little gap there. Mm -hmm. Can you show us, I don't know if you can recover your PowerPoint. Can you show us this oh, yes. slide I'll, you were talking about? I'll do that in a second. Thank you. So maybe in the meantime, there is a, a question from Soraya. I don't know if I'm pronouncing right the name. Um, I really, I'm, I don't understand very well the question because uh, from what you wrote, I understand that the students are in Italy and they are studying online in Ukraine. And then the students say that their university do not recognize the studies they are doing here. So. I really don't understand if they are studying online in Ukraine, why Ukraine doesn't recognize uh, their I studies. Think, Maybe yeah. it's something that yeah. uh, they're, uh, um, they are studying. So they are in Spain and they are studying online in Spain. Yes, this is happening a lot uh, with the students that they are in, in the host countries, but they are following their, their studies online. But I mean, the, 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 um, the recognition depends on each country and, and then the authorities within the country. So, I mean, as there is no such a universal recognition authority in Europe, so it's really very hard to answer. But if the online studies are efficient and recognized in, um, recognized in, in Spain, I don't see why they cannot be recognized in Ukraine. But no, she says that these students can be in different situations in the Universidad de Burgos, but they are following their studies. Yeah, online. Dentistry or wherever online, but the, the, the Ukrainian studies. So they are following their studies online. They have finished their exams, for example. And I think I'm, I'm just sort of interpreting you, Soraya. Uh, if the University of Burgos, for example, um, they say their university do not recognize the studies they are doing here. Well, Soraya, if you can open your mic, because I don't know if you are saying mm. that they are studying online there. Ukrainian studies. Um, sorry, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm um, in an office with more people. That that was I was writing in the chat. Uh, what I was wanted to tell you is to, that we've got 23 students here in Burgos studying in our university in the mornings generally, but then in the afternoons they need to follow the programs in Ukraine. Is uh, that they are following at the same time their studies in Spain and then in Ukraine. So they are like, mm, because they say that their universities in Ukraine do not recognize what they are studying in Spain, that they need to keep following their studies in Ukraine. I mean, but in this case, if the university says that they don't recognize, they, they should have give a reason why they do not recognize, because now I'm thinking, um, I don't know. I really, in this case, the, the thought that comes to my mind is, for example, in Italy, like um, until a few months ago, it was forbidden to have a double subscription in university. So if you were uh, admitted to one university in Italy, you couldn't have another admission. So you couldn't have, you couldn't 
follow two uh, different universities. So I don't know if that is the case in Ukraine, but in any case, if the university says that we cannot or we don't recognize your studies in Spain, they 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 have, they must give a reason for that. Okay, for the moment, we haven't had any more answers. And we are writing to the Ukraine uh, mm -hmm. universities and they don't actually give a reason. That's why I, I was mm. telling you this question because we, we don't know what to do. But um, for example, in this case, I suggest you also to write, for example, any Ukraine. They are really um, responding, uh, I'm not saying in two hours, but they are responding, they're explaining and so on. And for us, it's a, a, a such useful resource. Uh, so I, I'm sure they could explain. I mean, mentioning which university and that doesn't recognize uh, the studies that um, students are uh, are doing in Spain. So just write to them email and on the Enignaric website, you could find the, the contacts of Enic Ukraine and you just can send them an email. Okay, thank you very much. And we will do that. I've shared the contact, uh, well, I've shared the contact page of Enic Ukraine in the chat. And if you wish, Kati, I have the presentation ready. Okay, yes. I'll share it in a second. And that's any Ukraine. Sorry, here we go. Okay. Um, okay, so um, going back to the initial slide. Yes, um, the service is the uh, bottom left one. This is here in yellow extract of information about the documents available in Yerbo. Um, you can also share this name in Ukrainian uh, to the student. Actually, by clicking on this option, you get directly to the page with the respective link. Mm -hmm. And the um, um, what the student uh, will view is uh, this information, and these steps will need to be um, carried out by the student himself, so fill in the information and ask the extract. So um, um, require that an extract uh, be provided. This will be how the extract looks like. It will be again in Ukrainian only. Um, and you will have the uh, documents on the second column from the left, the series of the document and the number. So the uh, identification code of the document. Um, you will have the awarding institution, the date of issue, um, the validity period, um, whether it is a, for, is a document issued to a foreign student or not, um, and other important information. You will also have, uh, as I was saying before, information about the study process. So in this case, we can see that the student um, was admitted to a bachelor, bacalaver, uh, in this case, the status of study is completed, zaverszano, uh, navchanya. But if the if the study were still in progress, you would see here again in Ukrainian um, that the indication of the fact that the um, studies are ongoing, um, and this is the date of confirmation of the study status. So um, the last moment in which all the information present in this table uh, was updated. I hope this is um, sufficiently clear. If you have any more questions, uh, please feel free to, to ask. <laughs> thank you very much, Luca. Uh, thank you very much to all of our speakers. It has been a pleasure to share with you these two hours, intense two hours of insights, knowledge, and, and questions. Now it's 11.01. Uh, the uh, final point of this webinar is 11. I don't want to uh, have more time, more valuous time from you. What I can say is that um, there are specific points that we can apply as universities in, in our, in, at home, let's say. Um, I think that we, we have also a lot of work to do. I'm talking specifically, particular at the Spanish level. I think that to join the European qualification uh, qualifications passport can be a great step forward in in for for us in the country. Um, and regarding 
the uh, the Nokuts and Chimea's experience, what to say? Thank you. I think that you have given us uh, gave us a, like resources, important resources, in order to go or move forward in the process of recognition, especially now with Ukrainian students in our countries. Thank you, all of you. I hope uh, we can we can see each other in the near future and discuss more in the what is going on in the, the near phases of this recognition process. Thank you, everybody. Please, uh, you can have all the information provided by speakers in the Moodle. So use it and we can close this first webinar of the cycle of Welcome Refugees. Thank you, all of you. Susanna, I don't know if you want to say anything. Uh, thank you for all. Uh... All the information uh, we will be available in the model in this week. Uh, some presentation is not in this moment, but we will, uh, we will have that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you a nice day. Much.